4,000 people are in prison in Ireland today. 160 are women. Jail saved many lives. This prison saved many lives. You see people coming in here, and they're from that to that with needles. Some people coming off the streets, and they're ready for their dip bed. And it builds you up, and takes care of you, and then sends you back out. It seems to be half a mad home and half a prison. You get a lot of people that's gone through sickness, off drugs, people that's coming out of drink. All the bullying that's going on in here and all cells getting lit up and all, I'm going to scandalise them when I get out of I'm going straight to the papers. You don't know how to run your prison, you don't. What are you filming through? There's no better not beyond this, you. The women usually have a lot more needs. They might have an addiction problem and a homelessness problem and their children could be in care and their partner could be in prison. You know, there's usually a lot more than just one issue going on. Today, the urgent thing is that your children need to know that you're okay, isn't it? Yeah. You need to be the mother and show them that you're not upset. Even though you're missing them and everything else, you're the adult. I bet you can't wait. I do think that it is a bit harder on a girl being in prison, a mother especially. A male prisoner, his wife will come up to see him. She will bring all the children. She will make sure he has what he needs, whereas the females don't get that luxury. That, however it is, it isn't returned. <laughs> Which I suppose is kind of, it's really obvious, like, we do run around after men all the time. It's you not know, I, I forget what the outside is like. It's, you know, I, it's just like watching the telly if I'm thinking about it in my head. <laughs> There's just something there that doesn't... It lets you know you're not in the outside, like. You're in here to deal with it. On Dublin's North Circular Road is the largest prison campus in Ireland. It comprises of four separate jails. Mountjoy Prison, St. Patrick's Institution, the Training Unit, and the Doha Centre. The Doha Centre is the only exclusively female prison in the country. I'm asking, I asked the officer, they're to fucking call over, we will call over to see. Come on. My methadone. Sir! Get away from the door. I want my fucking methadone, and I shall out the window, she was obviously already on, but they're calling for the last hour. Closed. How much mean is closed? They're calling me for the last hour. For the last hour, I need my medical and I'm sick. Though there is a small female wing in Limerick Prison, most women imprisoned in Ireland will end up here. We're a medium security prison, we're not an open prison, but there's no open prison for women. So I think that's the idea behind the ethos of this place, is that even though we're a medium security prison, you're still trying to have as much freedom within the walls. You know, the women can move freely from their houses to school, they don't have to get passed through. They're called women, not prisoners. The houses are houses, not landings, so it is pretty different to most of the other prisons. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for you, you know, and I can't wait to see it tomorrow. The prison caters for all types of prisoners, from those sentenced to a few days to months, women serving several years to life. Their crimes range from petty charges to murder. Many of the women here are repeat offenders. Like days like this, lashing rain and all, I'd rather be in prison. Like I've often asked the judge to lock me up. Like it's, if you've nothing out there, like, like you can have things in here, like you have a shower, you have your telly, like you have your mates in here. Serving time for robbery, Christina, a mother of three, has been homeless since she was a teenager. When I was about 13 or 14, I just couldn't take it no more the way I was being treated in the HSE's care. I just couldn't take it anymore, so I just left. Being on the streets, Dublin, I had no family. I didn't, the only way to survive was to rob. That was the only way I could survive. Yeah, nice one. What age were you when you started dabbling in drugs? I started smoking hash and all when I first got to Dublin City. 
Start smoking hash and taking ecstasy with all my friends. I wanted to just be in the gang, like. What age were you? Uh, I was about 13, 14. And how soon were you then to move on to her and move on to her or so? Very last minute. I was 17 or something. Jackie! Like, I kick myself now for being on it, like. It's fucked up everything for me. Everything I had is gone. But you still take drugs? Yeah. To block things out. Because I don't can't deal with my emotions and like being in foster homes and all that. Like I was in 23 different foster homes. I'm only 25 now. I left care when I was 13. So in 13 years of my life, I was in 23 different homes. And what age were you the first time you came into prison? Juvenile prison, Oversamal, when I was about 13, 14. Acting Chief Officer Kelleher has been working here since the Doha Centre opened 15 years ago. Hello. Hola. Hola, hola. We are now in the big yard. Uh, the big yard would house most of our sentenced women. Uh, some of our more settled women, long-term women would live here. The women that are conforming um, more in relation to keeping the rules in relation to going to school, attending workshops. So the regime in this yard would be different to the regime in the small yard. Most of the women in the small yard would be on remand. Um, they possibly came in with uh, drug misuse problems and are just uh, stabilising on medication. Um, possibly not in a state yet where they can attend schools full time or, or work full time. Um, if they come in off the streets and they're unwell, it's a time to get themselves well. Um, so as I said, this yard would be slightly different in terms that the, the population would be a little bit more settled. Every woman coming into Dhokas spends her first night here, in the committal unit. Each new inmate must be assessed by the governor before joining the other prisoners in the yards. Six have come in. There are three others who are here at the moment. One has, because we know she has drugs on her person. You're back with us? Four months? Yeah. Where were you? What were you doing? Showing me grandma. That was you. Shoplift, but that's all about that. You know? Shoplifting? Mm-hmm. Can I go to the big yard? We can see how we go. You're not fighting with anybody else, though, no, so you're not. No, I'm not fighting with nobody. There'll be no trouble out in the room. We're really stuck for space. I don't know. There's no space big or small yard. The Doha Centre has capacity for 105 prisoners, but often the numbers exceed this. Today, 136 women are doing time here. To make room, some prisoners may be released early. Do you need a map? Right, come over and we'll get you one then. There is Beatrix's office. Yeah. No prisoner can be released early without a permanent address. But it is estimated that up to half of the women sentenced here are homeless. You're going here for half one. Half one yeah. Then two o'clock, you're going to Beatrix. Yeah. The integrated sentence management team liaises between the prisoners and all the outside services, including the HSE, social welfare, probation and others, aiming to achieve a smooth transition from prison to the community. Um, will you head over then, pack up your stuff and head to reception? Yeah. Reception, oh, you're on the way, all right? Thank you. One of their roles is to ensure that homeless women have a roof over their heads before being let out early on temporary release. At the moment in here, we have about 11 women that could have gone on temporary release in the last week or so, but there's no place for them to go. So our, the higher our numbers go, the more pressure that's put on, obviously, that there's more people coming in, so they have to try and get people out on temporary release. Here's Hi. Oh. <laughs> Stress? Stress. Yeah, small. No, not really, yeah, a bit. We've one that's due for release this Friday, so we can't keep her beyond Friday. So we can't give her temporary release because you can't give her temporary release with no address. But Friday, she has to go no matter what. So at the moment, we're looking at the possibility of her booking herself into a B&B. I need these. 
Yeah, too long on the... Uh, yeah, so you don't want to go there. Gardner Street and, uh, to be honest, most of them won't let, even let me in. Eileen has been in prison for three months, serving time for robbery. Due for release in a few days, she's hoping that she can secure the housing she wants. I don't mind going kind of a little... What's that here? Come in. Um, no availability. I don't know where we go from here. Sometimes we're sending people out. It's the only thing we have is night-by-night -night accommodation. So somebody can do really well in here, but then they go out, they're going to their accommodation. The next morning, they're gone from the accommodation. They've all day to spend on the street until that night so they can go back to the accommodation. So what's, if somebody has not got a job or a course, or what do they do all day? They're either going to meet with their old friends and use drugs or drink, and then in turn get into trouble. That's how. Like, it's not the prison's fault, because like, I didn't mind waiting here until the actual release date was over, because I need, I know we are much wrong in the past, and I have to try and not do that again, because it's harder to kind of get this much help outside than it is here. So the best thing I thought I could do for myself was to wait for the best accommodation possible. And that's why you have the revolving door. Yeah. Is because of what prison offers them. It's a terrible, it's a terrible it thing is, to yeah. say that people are sometimes safer in prison than in the community. Yeah. Oh, God, sorry, I'm sorry, just picking up the oh, Let no. all your lonely Levi's up. <laughs> 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 Jail can be a comical place sometimes. And then it can be a very sad a lonely place, all in the one day. Just stick down in my room, they'll do me. Sounds mad. Prison full of people and you still feel sad and lonely. Serving almost two years for multiple charges, Jenny is homeless and has no family since her parents died. Jenny has been in and out of prison since she was a teenager. Yeah, I don't stand much of a chance out there. You know, uh, my crimes are not serious crimes. Just shoplifting. Petty crime, drunkly disorderly, breach of the peace, stupid things. But them stupid things got me in a bad position. I have 347 previous convictions with them stupid things. Have a few drinks, we'll do this, we'll do that. Before you know you're behind bars. You're locked up. I know I'm, t I'm what, I'm 37, you know? and half my life has flashed by me through these places, you know. I've seen an awful lot of my friends, 20s, 21, 22, and they're all dead. Too much. Suicides, drugs. I'm amazed I'm still alive, I'll tell you the truth. My life is fucked. I know my life is fucked. Then you get young ones coming in, they think it's all deadly. No, this is deadly. You gave me four licks for her. You did because I asked for it. Winnie, a British writer like she told me to hand over. For the line of tramp, it's stand all over her head. Separated from the main prison is a self-contained unit called Phoenix House. This house is for the exclusive use of pregnant prisoners or those with young babies. We have three babies now at the minute, two little girls and a little boy. And then I'd have my baby, so that'll make four. So that's a fine laugh for us. And it's good for me to be around children. I like children anyway, but it makes the time pass that bit easier. You know, it makes it feel a bit more normal. Unless her child is to be taken into care, a mother may keep her newborn child in prison until the baby reaches one year. Come on, good girl. One, two, buckle my stinky shoes. Serving a two-year sentence for drugs offences, it's this single mother of five's first time in prison. It's better in this house. You're not out as... We don't have to be out as much. We have our own little garden bit there that we can sit out and if we want. And 
but when you go out into the yard outside or you go to school with your child, you're socialising with everybody. Drug addicts, paedophiles, and numerous other crimes that people are in for. And in some ways we're very lucky we can bring our babies into the prison with us, you know. I won't have to give my baby out I, to anybody. I can keep my baby with me, but I've left five kids at the end of the day and that's as simple as that, you know. And I know eventually I'll be going home, but at the minute that seems very far off for them, you know. There has been a dramatic increase in the number of women being sent to jail in Ireland. It has more than doubled since 2006. However, today, Eileen's sentence is up. All staff location there for Eileen O'Toole. Eileen, who has been homeless since she was a teenager, is still waiting to find out if the community welfare officer has found her accommodation. Beatrix um, contacted us there to say she's a B and B accommodation for. Which is great news. Good news. Well, you're going to on Brassel Street. Do you know it? Yeah. What's wrong? I won't say. I don't want to say that. Why? Because I was in it before, and I know what it's like. That's why. And it's not a decent, it's not an all right place to stay. Everyone in it is struggling. Mm -hmm. That's a squeeze of that, isn't it? Would the best thing to do be to go there and then try and go somewhere else from there? Where if there's no places to stay? How long ago did you stay there already? Really? Yeah, last year. Okay, bye bye. Do you want to give me a few minutes and see if she gets back to me? Get on the phone. I'm not going to a homeless b, &B. I could have been going weeks ago to a homeless b, &B. I mean, this is the whole idea of what I asked her to do. I said, I don't want to go backwards, I want to move forward. Just help people come back into prison. It's a really like killing someone stone dead. Sick of this. I'm not going back home to it. I was uh, speaking to the agents there, and she said that. That is all that's available. Um, she said you can go today and go to Cable Street straight away. She said you will. I'm not going to witness my fear. I want to talk to Beatrix myself. Just come here. I'm not talking to myself. Beatrix, come here. 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 Come I know it's not what you want, but if you go there tonight, at least you have a roof over your head. You can go to Cape Street this afternoon. And what are they going to give me? No one, because no. Beatrix has no one either. There's no accommodation. <coughs> okay. You can go there tonight and Monday, but you qualify for rent allowance. I don't. Start. That is going to leave me. Oh, yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> Does it get to you? Yeah, it does. Because we put so much work in here with them, and then once they leave here, we're not responsible. We can set them up with everything on the outside, but it's up to them to, to go to the services. We can't make them do it. And then she's left frustrated because she feels like nobody's trying to do it for her, when really weeks and weeks and weeks have been gone into trying and get somewhere for her. And, but unfortunately, this isn't a one-off story. This is. This is what happens. We're ready to roll. I'm leaving, Aggie. I'm going up to the new building, up to the Willows. Yeah. Overlooking the main yard is another secure unit, the Willows. Here, women on a highly incentivised regime enjoy many privileges and space not enjoyed by the majority of the women in the prison. Oh, 
does the job. <laughs> now, who wouldn't want to live up here, tell me? Yeah. So isn't that just worth all the hard work to get up here and just live peacefully? Women must be drug-free, must attend school and work in the prison to be considered to do time in the Willows. Many of the women here are on longer sentences. Una is serving 10 years for manslaughter. If you mess up up here, you're straight back down to the small yard. You're back to square one, like sharing and privilege is gone. Everything, you know, you wouldn't want to mess up up here. It's lovely anyway, like, you know, proper bed. After two years, couldn't believe it. That was the main reason I wanted to come up here, <laughs> the proper bed. I was supposed to go out today, Mammy's dead a month, and they refused me. I can't allow myself to get upset. If it slips in there, I just have to stop it. <laughs> if I could have told myself stop it now at the start, I wouldn't fucking be in here at all. Ten fucking years. I said, all right, how am I going to fill this up? Well, there's lots to do up here in this prison, you know, in Limerick. They used to ask me on the phone when I'd phone home, what are you doing? Smoking fags, drinking coffee and getting fat, you know. Up here I have things to tell them that I'm doing, you know, I do this and I'm doing that. And then you can make stuff and send it home and they, they know, you know. The, being up in this prison makes me feel like, you know, there is, I will get out. When you're down in Limerick, you just give up and think you're not going anywhere ever. So up here, you see people getting out and coming in every day, and there's hope for me. What's on? Glastonbury. I don't even think there's a telly in this place I'm going to. Where are you going to? In Basel Street. What's it called? Clown Basel Street. Is it a B&B? Yeah, Holmes B&B. Oh. See it. As today is the last day of Eileen's prison sentence, she must leave Dochus. From tonight, the prison has no responsibility for her care. Officer! See you, Eileen. Bye. Well, well. Where are you going to? Clan Basel Street. To die of this. Back to spirit one. You'll be grand. I won't go. <laughs> That's the thing. Just be good yourself. Be good. It's hard to be good when, when you walk through the door, everything's going to be the same. I yeah, I'm not supposed to have to get started. searched now, so. Though Eileen is free, she is still subject to a two year suspended sentence. Should we block break the whole phone? Finished yet. And MP3 now, by court order, she must engage with the probation services or face the sentence being reactivated and end up back in jail. Today is the annual sports day in Dochus. Christina has spent the past two nights in the Matter Hospital. How many stitches is that, Christina? Uh, Forty. Forty stitches? Yeah, and nineteen paper. You know, Christina, it's very hard for me to understand just how bad things are for yeah. for someone to do that to yourself. Can you explain it to me? It's just, um, it relieves pain from in here, like, it puts pain on a different side of my body. When did you start self-harming? What age were you? When I was nine. Nine? Yeah. Are you the only woman in here who self-harms? 
No. A lot of girls, but they do like little scrapes, no? Like, where the officers were saying, one of the officers said to me, oh, but has, but she's never seen anything like that. How long more are you going to be in here? Just till November. I have two trials as well. So I'll be back in for them. And what are you in for? Just um, producing an article. Pulling a knife out. And who did you pull the knife out on? In the shop. They gave me two a year. And the rest of us suspended. They were 11 months. Because this was ages gone, but they reactivated it, like, because I got in more trouble. Thank you. Before a prisoner is released, the ISM officers try to connect the women with services on the outside, such as CAP, Care After Prison, which provides courses and training for former prisoners. Hi, Jenny. Hello, everybody. How are you? Um, not too bad. How are you? I just wanted to um, check in with you about how you got on with Cap last week. You were talking to Pete. Yeah. Are you happy enough to meet up with them now when you get out? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Really. Approved for early release and engaging with outside services, Jenny, who is homeless, still can't leave prison until the community welfare officer finds her a place to live. Um, we're waiting on Beatrice to get back to us, so we're hoping that she's going to be able to help you out with the accommodation and things. Okay. So as soon as she comes back with information on accommodation, we'll talk to the governor and ask her to put an application up for temporary release. Okay. And we'll let her know then that you're going to work with CAP as well on the outside. Okay. So um, if we get in any information tomorrow, then we'll let you know and we'll sort out things from there. Okay. All right? Thanks very much. Your hair's absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, Jenny. Do you only get a blow dry? Yes, I do myself, yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. Thank you. It's very really so <laughs> Women of many nationalities are imprisoned in Dochus. Some are illegal immigrants awaiting deportation. Others were caught working in cannabis grow houses. But many are mules, caught trying to smuggle drugs into the country. Do you want this? Yes, this, yes. After 16 months in prison, Maria is to be deported. This prison is not bad. And thank you, thank you so much for the governor, for Miss Keenan. Miss Keenan. <laughs> I have chance for for a student English. Before I'm not speaking English, now a little bit. I think my English is a little good. Maria was caught in Dublin airport smuggling 50,000 euro worth of cocaine. Tonight, the Garda National Immigration Unit will take her into custody and she will be escorted back home to Bolivia. Maria! Don't get too drunk tonight, Maria! <laughs> also caught smuggling drugs into the country, Margaret Alexander, from Trinidad and Tobago, has been in prison now for eight months. Today I'm 51 years old. Being in prison is not nice. When you're locked away from your family and especially me, I'm in Ireland here and I have no visits from nobody. The only person that visits me is my um, solicitor and that's it. I'm a single mother of three. I have a six son suffers with cerebral palsy. And um, back home in my country, I have a little problem. I've been getting a home to live and my son needed money for surgery. Good friend of mine who knew me introduced me to some Nigerians from Venezuela. They told me that they wanted me to carry some stuff for them to Ireland. They said they will pay their, my ticket and everything for me, um, which I took the offer because I knew I wanted money to help me with my problems. No one talked to me about 
to me, please. I've had a completely rotten day. Couldn't be worse than Aunt Margaret's. <laughs> Knew, but nobody knew where I was and things like that until I called phone home and told them that I was in prison. When I came into the Doka Center and I saw the, dem the devastation of these girls there that take drugs, the way they look, every day you see them when they take drugs, the, the way they behave, and you know they would be in a bad state, so I was very sorry that I brought the drugs, although it was not mine, but I felt compassion for the girls in, the, in here. Have you ever done anything like this before? Why would you take the chance? Because I needed money desperately. And I talked to other prisoners here and they told me for their children they would do anything. But Margaret, by getting caught and by taking that chance, your son hasn't had his mother for the past you know, best part of a year. That's it. It's 4 a.m. Time for Maria to be handed over to the Gardaí and deported from Ireland. I'm so happy, 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 happy. Oh my God. Okay, no problem. Okay, you take care. Safe trip, alright? Okay. Thank you very much. Imprisoned here at a cost to the state of €65,000 annually, Maria is barred from ever entering this country again. She will return to her 10 and 7 year old children who haven't seen their mother in over 16 months. In a few days, the prison will be making room for its youngest inmate, a baby boy. Three days old and starting his first sentence, huh? God help us. Awful. He didn't do anything, you know. Terrible, you know, he's innocent and he needs to go back in here with me. <laughs> he doesn't get to go home like my other kids did when they were born. The only good thing is he won't remember, you know, he'd be too small. But I remember. The prison's location on the North Circular Road means that often drugs are thrown in over the prison wall. A dropsy, as it's called. In, let's go! No. Today, the nets have done their job, but to be sure no drugs fall into the wrong hands, the prisoners are locked into their houses. That's new girls that don't know the story about getting their dropsies. If that had been any of the old-timers, we would have got that. We'd have been stoned in the <laughs> An emptied egg has been used to carry the drugs over the wall, in the hope that as the shell breaks, the drugs will fall through the net. These nets were placed over the prison yards three years ago. 
Since then, drug use has reduced dramatically. Drugs are still smuggled in by friends and family during visits. How much drugs is in, is in a drop here in that size? It's 10 tablets. 10 or something that size now would be around 20 tablets in that size. But same as the bags of her own, that's it. So, whoever was doing this didn't really know what they were doing. It was the first time he threw them, you know. So, uh, let's see what's in this. Let's always have a practical joke. Nothing. Coins. Strange. Doesn't make sense to me, then. Doesn't make sense to me at all. I never had a coins. You? Yeah. No. That's the first time. money for the talk shop. It's the only other reason. Come on, we go. That's new girls for you coming in here and not knowing what they're doing. I don't care, it was nothing got to do with me. If I had it been, I'd, I'd be stoned now. Eggshell. It's only eggshell. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, There's your baby. What did you call him? Oh, he's adorable. The two day old baby must now go with his mother into Mount Joy and stay there with her until her release. We know how to strap it in now. I'm not too sure about it. Are you not? Know, yeah. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Oh. Hi, Mammy. I'm in the car with the officer now. We're heading back, OK? Yeah. I know, yeah. I know it'll be fine. He's the only man that has about 140 women waiting for him, probably. <laughs> yeah, I do know. So, tell the lads I love them and I'll talk to them later, OK? I won't be upset, Mammy. I'll be OK. All right? We'll be fine. I look at it, love you, mommy. Bye, bye, bye. Miss swim just if we're going across the yard, they can look, but just don't let him paw him because yeah, he's so new. Oh my god! Oh, look at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's Seven nine. Oh, he's beautiful. He's a bit jaundiced at the minute, sir. A baby boy! Yeah. Oh, no, I have to stand with the motor bus over in that room. I forgot that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You can even mind the bed there and I can sort him out. I feel so bad, you know. I feel so sorry for him. I feel like the worst person in the world. <laughs> The housing crisis in Dublin City means that though she was approved for release weeks ago, Jenny has yet to be found a home. Yeah, I was told today that um, there's 60 odd people, 60 people um, on the homeless list on the outside actually sleeping on the streets of Dublin. So I have to wait till they're housed, get bed and breakfast in hostels and then they look at me. It is disappointing on me, you know. I, I'm missing out on my job, I'm missing out on my work. You know, I got, as you know, I, I was working with CAP. And plus, um, I'm doing cleaning in here, I'm working away in here too, I'm keeping my head down. I'm doing everything that I possibly can do, you know. And I'm finding the 
I am finding it difficult when they tell me, you know, Jenny, God, there's no beds <laughs> on the outside. Like, come on. Like, uh, what is what, 2013 now? And there's people still homeless on the streets. It's ridiculous. In prison, tensions often run high. It was a busy evening. One of the women that lives on this corridor was a little bit frustrated at the moment. And uh, was feeling a little bit self-destructive. So she set her room on fire last night, put herself in the room. Okay. The particular woman who did this last night, as I said, is, is a little bit frustrated. She's feeling a bit down the dumps. It's out of character for her. Um, at this time of the year as well, around Halloween, there's a lot of uh, um, hooch, which would be like kind of a homemade alcohol in here, floating around and a lot of tablets floating around. And as the staff were dealing with this last night, there was also an argument or an alleged assault in the kitchen. A lot of the other women get frustrated. Um, because it's difficult enough doing their time here and then, you know, when they're trying to mind their own business and something like this is happening and there's an argument going on, some people want to stay out of it, other people are defending friends or alliances they've made in here, so it's very difficult to stay out, to stay out of that unease around the place because you always end up getting involved in some way. There is only one other women's prison in Ireland. Here in Limerick City, a small wing of the male prison has capacity for 28 women. Like many Irish prisons, it too is overcrowded. Almost all of the women here are from the Munster counties. Excuse me, after two, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see you at two o'clock, yeah? Transferred to Limerick from the Doha Centre a week ago. In comparison to the relative freedom Christina enjoyed in Dublin, here she is locked in her cell from evening to morning. No, I'd rather down here than the Dokas anyway. They tell me down here for punishment, it's not punishment. I get on better, there's a better routine than I get on better down here than I do up in the Dokas, I think. P19's all over the place up there. I haven't had one P19 ever since I came down here. Jelly. Jelly and the belly. Out of the bit of ice. I do that up, Mount, up huh? in Mount Joy every Sunday. What? Every Sunday, Mount Joy ice cream and jelly. Or they used to do a trifle, but there'd be killings all for trifle. Oh, <laughs> Killings all for trifle now, man. Oh. Yeah. Nobody, I don't think, deserves to be like Limerick Jail. <laughs> I didn't see the day, the daylight for 17 months. I didn't bother going out in the yard, it was too freaking small. And then it was just constant screaming and shouting from all the young ones, you know, so I just didn't bother going out. Like. Una spent the first year and a half of her 10 year sentence in Limerick Prison before being transferred to Dublin. On Limerick, you could be the best in the world, and you're still locked back. Do you know what I mean? The door is still slammed shut if you don't go to the record yard. Like, if you're working all right to get your door left open, but that's one door left open for all the workers, so everybody's inside in that one cell. Young girls coming in there, 19, 20, you know, even 18, and they're being treated like that. What's that to teach them? Like they're going to go back out, and they're going to be full of anger when they get out of Limerick prison. Like. Like with the lock and back, it's better because in the joy you have your freedom and you can do what you want to do. People's talking about drugs all day. And, but down here, like, it's good, but it's boring. But the telly is great, you have every station on the telly. Now, I think it's wrong the way we have to eat our food in here and there's a toilet there. I don't eat. I can't eat the food down here. There's eyes in the bidet. It's saying, don't eat me. 
This ice chest, uh, you bang them off the wall. Uh, the field is bad. The field is very bad. How many times have you been here in the Um, About five or six. The five or six, yeah. She makes a lovely cup of tea and coffee. Yeah. Thanks, love. I'll give you a drink just now. Thanks. Even in Mount Joy, all the girls who say that you read out the old prison, people that was in the old prison, and the old prison was run like this, and they'd rather that, been locked up for meals and things like that. Because, like, that's what, nearly two hours just gone quick. I mean, watch four half an hour programs, Criminal Minds. Watch four hour programs, even, and gone. Like, it, it's gone, isn't it? Okay. It flies out. Like, I'm down here since Saturday, and it feels like. I'm only here two days or something. It went that quick, and I'm here nearly a week. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Hi. How are you? Right. Beatrix has sorted a and b Oh, that's cool. After months waiting, finally, at the end of November, Jenny has been assigned accommodation in Dublin City. Is that fair enough? Oh, okay. And we'll probably see you before you go anyway. Okay. Thanks right. very much. No Thanks very much, Ms. McDonald. No God problem. Bless see you later, Jenny. Talk to you later. I'm going home. I'm now, today, yeah. I'm going home, lads. You go home. Yeah, to get me I've worked here for 14 years and Jenny's been coming in and out in the time that I've been here. See you, good luck. Well. Oh, thanks very much. It says there, right? She's street homeless when she's outside. She's happier in here, I think, than when she's outside because she knows she's safe, she's fed, she's medically looked after, she's treated with dignity and respect. She doesn't have that anywhere else. You have to come back tomorrow to sign on, right? Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. You better be up here or you'll be on off the alert. I know, yeah. I can't go alert and I only out. I know drink, I know drugs. No drink, this. <laughs> Best luck. Well, thanks, thanks very much. So you take care, you hear me? Our long term aim is to get her spending longer periods out than in, that she can link with services on the outside, that she doesn't feel that she has to come back. Hello, sir. So. How are you? Yeah, detective. <laughs> so a lot of times she'd do something on purpose so that she'd come back into custody. I appreciate that, Mr. Lady, you know that? Thanks very much. On release, every eligible prisoner is entitled to one week's social welfare. Just go in the shop now. When we let people out on temporary release, the journey from the main gate to the city centre often dictates whether they'll be back here or not or pick up a fresh charge. It's yeah. as quick as that. Watch it, don't get a wrap of a motor. The more of a plan the woman has in place and the more supports she has in place, the more likelihood she will be to stay out longer or not come back at all. The less of a plan, the less secure accommodation and the less supports, the more likely she is to come back in. That was long waiting for. <laughs> like, I'll be honest with you, when I'm temporary release now, and I'm drinking, I shouldn't be drinking. But you know what I mean? When you're locked up there for two, uh, two and a half years, you're bound to do something. I don't drink pints. I like Jemison whiskey, hot coffee, three sugars. <laughs> I'm a posh alcoholic. See everyone in that fucking joy, they're cutting themselves up, they're hanging themselves. I that's what I'm worried about. I hope for the best for myself. I happen to start work on some Monday, you know, so I'll be freshened up then, then. You know, going to work with cap, what I want to do. Do you drink? Yeah, I do, yeah. Do you want to make some now? That's the strong one you drink. I'm a very outspoken, out straight person. If I said I was going to go out robbing today, I'd tell you. You know? But I know. I don't want to. I want to keep my head down, stay out of trouble and let the world pass by. You know? And that's the only way you can do it. So what's the start? You're going here a little bit? Yeah. 
No, at least no is the major. Ah, what's the crack me, cracker? Yeah, you flat. Sit down in time bar. Oh, bless. You probably tell me I have no home to go. Huh? You only have to come in on your own? I know that, love. Say it, right? I'm trying, like, my hardest. I'm on 188 for job seekers allowance, which is shit, like. And sometimes I have to shoplift. Christina. Oh, my God, listen, people. Banging up here. Christina. Come on, you. Snapped this morning. I hate the governor and everything else. I swear to God, I'm sick of this. <laughs> I live in fear that they're going to break out into a fight and chairs will come flying. And how am I going to get him out? It's cosy. And it's much nicer than the bed and breakfast. If the Governor McMahon could see me now, she'd be thrilled. She might yet look at her. <laughs> If you have been affected by issues raised in this programme, please go to RTE Airtel page 700 or rte.ie forward slash Airtel. Four thousand people are in prison in Ireland today. One hundred and sixty are women. Jail saved many lives. This prison saved many lives. You see people coming in here and they're from that to that with needles. Some people coming off the streets and they're ready for the dip bed. And it builds you up and takes care of you and then sends you back out. There seems to be half a mad home and half a prison. You get a lot of people that's gone through sickness, off drugs, people that's coming off drink. All the bullying that's going on in here and all the cells getting lit up and all, I'm going to scandalise them when I get out of there. I'm going straight to the papers. You don't know how to run your prison, you don't. Why do you feel I'm crude? There's no better not beyond this you. The women usually have a lot more needs. They might have an addiction problem and a homelessness problem and their children could be in care and their partner could be in prison. You know, there's usually a lot more than just one issue going on. Today, the urgent thing is that your children need to know that you're okay, isn't it? Yeah. You need to be the mother and show them that you're not upset. Even though you're missing them and everything else, you're the adult. I bet you you can't wait. Oh, I that. do think that it is a bit harder on a girl being in prison, a mother is. Because I don't can't deal with emotions and like being in foster homes and all that. Like I was in 23 different foster homes. I'm only 25 now. I left care when I was 13. So in 13 years of my life, I was in 23 different homes. And what age were you the first time you came into prison? Juvenile prison, Aubusson, when I was about 13, 14. Acting Chief Officer Kelleher has been working here since the Doha Centre opened 15 years ago. Hello. Hola. Hola, hola. We are now in the big yard. Uh, the big yard would house most of our sentenced women. Uh, some of our more settled women, long-term women would live here. The women that are conforming um, more in relation to keeping the rules in relation to going to school, attending workshops. So the regime in this yard would be different to the regime in the small yard. Most of the women in the small yard would be on remand. Um, they possibly came in with uh, drug misuse problems and are just uh, stabilising on medication. Um, possibly not in a state yet where they can... Last hour! For the last hour, I 
Though there is a small female wing in Limerick prison, most women imprisoned in Ireland will end up here. We're a medium security prison, we're not an open prison, but there's no open prison for women. So I think that's the idea behind the ethos of this place, is that even though we're a medium security prison, you're still trying to have as much freedom within the walls. Okay. You know, the women can move freely from their houses to school, they don't have to get passed through. They're called women, not prisoners. The houses are houses, not landings, so it is pretty different to most of the other prisons. Mm -hmm. Well, I love you, you know, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. The prison caters for all types of prisoners, from those sentenced to a few days to months, women serving several years to life. Their crimes range from petty charges to murder. Many of the women here are repeat offenders. Like days like this, lash around and all, I'd rather be in prison. Like, I've often asked the judge to lock me up. Like, it's... If you've nothing out there, like... Like, you can have things in here, like, you have a shower, you have your telly. Like, you have your mates in here. Especially. A male prisoner, his wife will come up to see him. She will bring all the children. She will make sure he has what he needs, whereas the females don't get that luxury. That, however, is it isn't returned. Which I suppose is kind of, it's really obvious, like, we do run around after men all the time. It's not like, I forget what the outside is like. It's not like, it's just like watching the telly if I'm thinking about it in my head. <laughs> There's just something there that doesn't, it lets you know you're not in the outside, like, you're in here too. But... On Dublin's North Circular Road is the largest prison campus in Ireland. It comprises of four separate jails. Mountjoy Prison, St. Patrick's Institution, the Training Unit and the Doha Centre. The Doha Centre is the only exclusively female prison in the country. Serving time for robbery, Christina, a mother of three, has been homeless since she was a teenager. When I was about 13 or 14, I just couldn't take it no more the way I was being treated in the HSE's care. I just couldn't take it anymore, so I just left. Being on the streets, Dublin, I had no family. I didn't, the only way to survive was to rob. That was the only way I could survive. Yeah, nice one. What age were you when you started dabbling in groups? I started smoking hash and all when I first got to Dublin City. Started smoking hash and taking ecstasy with all my friends. I wanted to just be in the gang like. What age were you? Uh, I was about 13, 14. And how soon were you then to move on to heroin, move on to harder stuff? So? Very last minute. I was seven nine or something. Like I kick myself now for being on it, like it's fucked up everything for me. Everything I had is gone. But you still take drugs? Yeah. To block things out. 